Mina, Kong Kong Wa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here, back with that second episode of Today Like I Promised. And let's jump right into it. This is the last part of Psalm 96, verse 13. And I'm going to take a topic that's generally not looked upon favorably, and I'm going to try to make it look favorable. And it's a part of God. It's good, just like He is. It's just, I think there's a lot of misunderstanding, a lot of misrepresentation of this from the church. So I'm going to take some negative, and I'm going to make it pause. I'm going to show you how it's a good thing. Okay? Are you ready? No? Well, we're going to go into it anyway. I promise this is going to end, this is going to end well. I'm going to let you down softly. So Psalm 96, verse 13, before the Lord. Yeah, that, that's how the verse starts. I have no idea why the person putting in the verses started there and not at the beginning of the next sentence. What a weird guy. Let's just keep going. For he is coming, for he is coming to judge the earth. He shall judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with his truth. So the part I'm going to be looking at here is obviously the judgment part. Again, you think about the judgment of God and you think about, you know, how when you die you're going to stand before him at the judgment. You know, at the end of time he's going to judge the entire world. A lot of the times Christians down here put and pass judgment on people. First off, I'd like to just say I am sorry for all the people who feel like they have been judged by the church. We are supposed to say when something is right and something is wrong. It is not our place to condemn anyone to hell. And it is not our place to tell anyone that God does not love them or God hates them. That's not what the church is here to do. Uh, Jesus died for everyone so that we could stand before him before the judgment, and he would say, you pass. That's why Jesus died. So, on behalf of the church, as much as it is within my ability and as much as you will accept it, um, yeah, I am sorry for that. Again, the church says what's right and what's wrong. It doesn't condemn anyone to hell. It doesn't tell people that God doesn't love them. That's not what the church is here to do. Um, the church is here to affirm the love of God and the sacrifice of Christ, which is proof of God's love to you and anyone who will accept it. And that will lead all of us into heaven. Now, back to the judgment part that is God's, where he will decide who goes to heaven and hell, where he will decide who has done right and who has done wrong. First bit of good news here, Jesus died for you. You can go to heaven this, and be guaranteed of eternity with God, bliss forever, if you will accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. God's judgment on you, I'll tell you right now, let me give you the heads up here. His judgment on you is that you have sinned. You've done things that are wrong. Surprise! <laughs> Is there a single human being who would say they haven't done something that's wrong? And I don't mean just like a mistake. I mean something that's genuinely wrong. As far as lying about something, taking something that didn't belong to them, you know, cheating on somebody or something. Not necessarily sexually. Um, that is part of it. But I mean, even in a smaller way, cheating on someone and betraying them in some small way. Who hasn't thought ill of their neighbor. Who hasn't spoken ill of their neighbor. By the way, your neighbor is every single human being on the face of the planet. We have one father and one mother, Adam and Eve. We're all neighbors. We're all fellow humans. So anyone goes under that umbrella. That's the judgment. You've done something wrong. Not a huge surprise. The good news is your God and your maker, Jesus Christ, came to this world in the form of a human, named Jesus Christ, surprisingly enough, and he died on the cross for your sins. He shed his blood to wash away all of your sins. And then he rose again three days later to guarantee you eternity in heaven and a good judgment. Yes, when we stand before his judgment, we will be told what was right and what was wrong. And I'm sure for pretty much everybody that the judgment's going to have its rough spots where we have sinned, where we've done things that are wrong. The good news is that the blood of Jesus Christ washes away all those sins. He wipes away all the tears from our eyes. And then we spend eternity in heaven with him. When he comes and judges the world with his truth and in righteousness like that verse was talking about, that's the day, beloved, that us and the rest of the world even the non-believers who will be sentenced to hell in that day, his truth will set us completely free. 
We will know exactly what's right and what's wrong. We'll know exactly where we're right and where we're wrong. And we will know also why God is completely right and why any way we think or act or say or do in any way, shape, or form contrary to him is wrong. We'll be shown that with crystal clarity on that day. And again, it, this does not have to be some terrifying, horrible thing. It's going to be completely liberating. It's going to be completely... It, that's the grand reveal we've all been waiting for. And that day can be a good day for you. If you are a Christian, rejoice for that day, all right? That's the day when you will be brought into complete unity with your God. For the non-Christian, you can rejoice. If you will accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have nothing to fear on that day. Nothing. Nothing. In fact, yeah, it's a little over five minutes. I'm known to ramble. Let me just lead a sinner's prayer right now. That's the prayer where you make Jesus your God, Lord, and Savior. You, you don't need to follow my prayer. You can use your own words. But if you want an example to follow, if you want someone to lead you, pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I admit I'm a sinner. I've done bad things. And I need your cross and your blood to wash all that bad away. I believe you're real, Jesus. I believe you did die on the cross for me. And I believe you rose again, guaranteeing me heaven and a good judgment before you. Thank you so much for being my God, my Master, and my Savior. I gladly accept you as all these things right now, Jesus. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer, the deal's done. The contract's written. You're a Christian. You're going to heaven. And if you did just sign that contract, good luck trying to get away from God. I won't say it's impossible. What I will say is someone who's tried to do it, it's really, 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 really hard to do. You just, it's, nah. <laughs> it, <laughs> How can I put it? Yeah, you can walk away from him. But all that hell that you're supposed to be missing because he saved you from it, you're going to go through a little bit of that here on earth if you try to walk away from him. Um, you will experience that right now because Jesus, he won't let you go. He won't go away. He will stay by your side. He will stay with you and he will keep your soul breathing as long as it takes because he loves you and he died for you. So congratulations to anyone who entered that contract and into that covenant with him, who made him your God, Master, and Savior. And once again, it's, if, you, if you change your mind at this point, it's going to be really, really, really hard to get away from him. And that's a good thing because he is determined to give you the best judgment possible and good to set you free and make you one with him. Guys, thank you very much for watching this video. Bit of a long one. Thanks for sticking it through with me. I love you, and God bless.